Hi, welcome to my first of perhaps many, but I'll see how they go, <laughs> midweek camera roll videos. Now, I've mentioned this in one or more videos recently, and the premise of this is that I take photographs when I'm not actually vlogging. And I thought to myself, well, how can I, I, I guess, show those images that I take other than posting them on Instagram or putting them on Facebook. So I thought, yeah, let's throw a little video together that actually demonstrates, you know, demonstrates the wrong word, shows you the images that I've taken between vlogging, but actually I'd like to walk through and explain my thought processes. So this will be the first of my camera rolls. What I'm going to do is recite that camera. I'll be looking at my computer screen, but I'll put myself down in the corner or up in the corner. And we'll walk through what images I took during the course of, you know, the last vlog to the next one and um, talk you through my thought processes. So let's get on the computer and do it. So what happened this month? I bought the new lens. If you saw the autumn photography video, link here, you'll know that I went out and shot with my new Tamron 18 to 200, which turned out to be quite a good lens. I'm still having problems trying to work out why the focus is having issues when I'm in shutter priority. I don't know. So it's something I'm going to have to work with. Um, but maybe that's the new lens talking to the Nikon D3200. So anyway, I went out with that lens for that photo shoot. But prior to that, the lens arrived and I'm indoors. I'm all excited. And I don't know if you've done this. You get a new lens or you've got a new camera. And you sat at the, you know, the, the, the sofa and you're looking through the manual and you think, how do I? you end up taking loads of internal interior shots, you know, your coffee table, books on the coffee table, aiming at the TV. Well, actually, what I was doing, it rained on the day that the lens arrived. So, my first couple of shots are rain images. So let's start this gallery off. I think I've got 57 images to talk through. Image number one, it rained. So I'm sat in the living room and I'm just capturing the rain. It's a rather um, rainy shot. Get the properties up here of that image. 125th of a second, so I'm trying to capture the raindrops. Um, yes, yeah, it, that's through my living room window. So I'm quite pleased with that. So there's a lovely cottage just opposite my house. Um, I think it's... 1600 something like that it's it's a grade listed building but it's got all these wonderful chimneys and i thought yeah okay let's focus in on the chimneys i can still catch the rain as it's falling you can see it in the tree in the birch tree on the right there and new lens 18 to 200 let's zoom in let's see if we can do some stuff with this so i go for the left hand chimney and I, yeah, it just amazed me. I, I'm capturing the rain falling and hitting the roof. <laughs> I told you I was a photographer things, didn't I? And then the other one, which is very quite arty. So I've got a shallow depth of field going on. And you can see that the leaves in the foreground are actually... And they're the leaves from my bush. They're actually blurred. But you've got a hint of autumn with the other leaves just in the foreground of the chimney. And look at that rain coming down. Amazing. Okay, so then it didn't rain. And I went out for a walk. And I like doing this. I'll go out for a walk and I'll take images, you know, just as I'm, I'm out doing it. And this is Denton Lane at the top of Witten just going down. And I love how the light is streaming through the trees. And that's what caught my eye, especially at the end of the lane. Well, at least this section of the lane. It looks like I'm in a tunnel. So it's um, it's light at the end of the tunnel for me. Perhaps I could have taken the shot without the public footpath sign. Maybe walked a bit beyond it. But it's not about um, portfolio shots for me. I really do capture things just as I see them. <laughs> so... 
As I'm walking down, I'm looking at all the leaves and all the plants, and I catch this insect. It's obviously from a bee or a wasp family. I have no idea what it is, um, but it looked big, kind of hornetish. Hornetish is that a word of the hornet family? <laughs> anyway, further down, I took this shot, and you'll remember from my autumn photography, I did a pano of these trees. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to do a midweek roll, I might try and capture this every time I'm out walking so that I can see the different variants of the colours of the leaves as the season progresses. So I captured that, if only for that. Anyway, at the end of the lane is the lone tree. And so I caught a couple of shots. I had the sun behind me and there was a moody grey sky. It's all green. I mean, this is... We're in autumn now. Um, you can see hints of autumn in there. And then an, another one cropped in and zoomed just on that. And while I was stood on the side of the lane, I'm looking at the plants and I caught that one. So I was experimenting here with depth of field, focusing in on the so kind of the stalk. Is that what it is? You know, the branches of the plant up to the flowers at the top. This is one of my learning curves. So obviously I've got the stalk in focus and I've got some of the plants, but because I'm so close with the macro, it's actually blurring the flowers that are closest to me. But it's all in the learning, so I've got to progress with that. And then at the end of the lane, we've got the snow. What do you call it? It's like, um, you know, the, the grit box that you throw out when we get snow. The public footpath, just a very countryside lane <laughs> image. And then at the weekend, was it the weekend? Probably Saturday. I went out with friends to Sandwich in Kent. If you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know that I posted a few pictures. So the next batch of shots are all from Sandwich. And we took a walk. It was kind of a perimeter walk around the village. And it's called the butt walk and the rope walk. And it goes around the outside of the wall of Sandwich Village. So you kind of end up meandering through lanes and also country, country kind of walks. But I was crossing the road from the nature reserve into Butt Lane. And this caught me. I thought, yeah, I love that. The orange hueness of the late afternoon. So it's shining on all the buildings. We've got the brick wall, and I love a brick wall. I don't know what it is. I've got them on both sides, actually. And I put some people in, you know, a bit of human element to it. Because I saw them walking along the path. I thought, yeah, let's get them in there. So going along the lane, you've got to take a front-on shot, haven't you, of a house, a little cottage. This is Mott Cottage. Just very pleasant. You know, the leaves and the, the, the growth, the plants, rose bushes covering the windows yeah very pleasant back down another country lane look at that that's just like something out of a jigsaw puzzle or um a chocolate box cover take the car out of the picture you know if you're planning your photography you might think i'm going to take that shot but i'm going to do it when there are no cars around that's a parked car not a lot i could do with that but i like it got a leading line I've got the road taking me through the village scene. Walking further along, <laughs> I saw a post box stuck in a wall, but the sun was shining down on the trees beyond the wall, so in, in whatever garden is in the back there. And it got me thinking, why, if you own the wall and you own the property, how do you allow the post office to put a post box in your wall? Because I know it's private property on the other side. Do you think the post office pay the people? <laughs> There's a close-up of it. Victoria Regina. So a post box from Victorian era. Astonishing. That's over 100 years old, that post box. Well, in fact, she died in 1901. So 123, at least, years old. Staggering. <laughs> Where am I going next? Another back lanes of Sandwich. I love this kind of photography just because it brings out for me 
there's a there's a Welsh word called heareth, which basically says that you yearn for something from the past that you actually haven't ever experienced. So all I can see here is it conjures up an image of the past, which I feel I belong to, I feel I've been involved in, but I actually haven't. <laughs> heareth, great word. Where are we going? We crossed the bridge, we can see the river store, and we've got all the boats moored on the left and the right hand side, and I like the leading line of the river going through. A little blown out on the top there, but you know, when you're walking around taking photographs, yes, you can be playing around with all your settings and everything, but sometimes it's just capturing that moment, isn't it? Right, we then went down to the rope walk, and I saw these lovely willow trees all along the river, and the river's got all this green moss or algae on it. And I thought, what a great shot with the sun streaming through. And it's my photographer eye, you know, I'm going, going around walking like this, but I'm not purposefully doing that. I'm just, I know what I can visualize. I'm seeing the shot. I like the line of trees on the left. I like the verge, sorry, on the right. I like the verge on the left. Yeah, very nice. Then there was one tree with the le uh, branch broken. I thought, yeah, take a shot, why not? But then, as we passed that, I caught all of the tree with the sun streaming through. So I'm basically facing the sun, but the willow tree is shading the strong sunlight and giving me all the illumination on the leaves lovely shot and you know what it's being there it's being there standing there walking around knowing that I'm going to do photography but not knowing what I'm going to take a picture of I'm just going to be able to capture something yeah I like it it's lovely where are we now <laughs> bottoms up anyone <laughs> the duck kept going in the water and I thought I'll get a shot of him with his you know duck's tail duck tail DA, duck's ass, <laughs> And it, it made me wonder, how does he know, because it was a drake, how does he know that there's something underneath? Because you can't see under the surface. It's just crazy. Then we had a bit of nature photography, because I was spying all these different plants. Now, I think this, it's got a reference to Jesus. Is it a Jesus creeper? It's got the three prongs on the top, which represent the Holy Trinity. I don't know. Drop me a comment if you know. But it was worth taking a picture of because it was kind of in full bloom. Bit of macro going on. Shallow depth of field. <laughs> I saw the blackberries. I think they're blackberries because they're turning black. So again, focusing in on the berries, making the background blurred. I was going to talk you through the... the um, metadata but I think it's obvious it's a, a low aperture isn't it and some strange yellow are they of the daisy family I say yellow pink I'm not colorblind honest <laughs> where have I gone oh I love this <laughs> there was a junction just outside the church and it was showing us that if you turned right it was a dead end but I, I saw a tap no through road, drip, drip, drip. I've never seen, a, you know, a dead end sign like that before. I've got to capture that. James pops this moment, right? I'm looking over here because I can see what's coming next. I saw an old boat. Ben Gardner's boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. Any boat reference that you like. I think the only thing that didn't stand out for me is the fact that it's a green boat with a green foreground and a bit of green background. Had that been red, that would have popped. That would have been great. But I like taking pictures of old boats. And I thought, let's do a colour splash where we separate the boat from the foreground and background. So there it is with kind of black and white, but making the boat green kind of doesn't really work. So you saw the river store picture from the bridge end. That's in the town centre. This is from the other end. So the river store is coming around. 
and we've still got all these boats moored. You've got a boat yard on the left, big red crane, which lifts the boats out and they can do the maintenance. And the one in the foreground is actually a houseboat, so people live on it. I wonder if they actually can sail it. Seeing a picture like this, it just throws in a little bit of question. You you ask yourself, are they weekend boats? Do people live on them? You know, how often do they go out on their boats? Is it a seasonal thing? Have they got lots of money? <laughs> okay, walking around, I saw a Ford Mustang convertible. I'm a sucker for a classic car. Probably more the English classic cars, but you know what? It was an American one, so straight in for the headlight and the, the bumper. I like these kind of abstract, you know, let's take an element of the subject out of the big picture. So I kind of zoomed in. Perhaps I could have just caught the, t you know, the top of the bonnet with the light and the, the um, badge on the on the right there and the bumper. But again, I wasn't thinking in terms of super composition. I just wanted to capture it. And there it is straight on. So that was the Saturday. On the Sunday, I went to Duxford. There's a video coming soon because I think I'm knocking two videos together, which will be the Tudor Travels, my other channel. So an actual walk around Duxford during the Battle of Britain Day. But I'm also doing a video that includes photography, because obviously I took pictures. So I um, was sat in the pilot's enclosure, simply because my grandson's girlfriend's parents, <laughs> it's not what you know, it's who you know, um, they work at Duxford. The guy maintains the Spitfires, and the wife works on the committee for the events. So, of course, two years now. Would you like free tickets for the Duxford show? And not only do you get free tickets, me, with my other son, we get to sit in the pilot's enclosure, so I'm like really close to the aeroplanes. So I'm watching Sally B, Lancaster, Spitfires, Hurricanes, Swordfish, all of these things flying around, and I'm just here taking photographs. Um, Catalina coming in, PBY. What it got me thinking, because there's the swordfish, the string bag, was that I see aeroplanes at Headcorn. I, I see the Spitfires and the Hurricanes and all the other aeroplanes, the Tiger Moths. And I was getting a little bored just taking pictures of aeroplanes. <laughs> so I thought, let's go out and walk around Duxford. So the next batch of pictures are all about just walking around Duxford, taking kind of street photography. But it was the people dressed up, cosplay, they're wearing REF uniforms, GI uniforms, all that kind of stuff. But before I went out, Dermot O'Leary sat right in front of me. <laughs> he, he was there with his wife and little child and his brother. I didn't engage any conversation with him, but you don't. Celebrities need downtime as well, don't they? Anyway, there I was. I was saying to James, my boy, didn't he do Big Brother? Didn't he do, like, Britain's Got Talent or something? <laughs> I, I, I don't watch television a lot. So anyway, went out and started walking around. And it's great when you walk around because you see so many photograph opportunities. And this is a perfect example. They've got the static airliners, the Trident and the Vickers VC-10. And it's open to walk in and out. You know, you, you on, on this day, you had to buy a ticket. I think it was nine quid. But if you visit Duxford on a normal day and the aeroplanes are open, I say open, you know, they've got the cockpits open and stuff, you can just walk in and walk through. So this couple, I thought, that image looks like a couple who are just going on a jet for a holiday and they're taking a selfie. And I'm just walking with my camera, you know. I'm walking around, just, it's poised, it's ready. Oh, wow, click, took the shot. <laughs> you couldn't sell it, you couldn't put it anywhere, but it's, I, I, I love it. <laughs> it was good. Then the Eurofighter was doing its display. Little clip here. And I thought, yeah, we're all looking at this Eurofighter flying around. 
Let's turn the camera around to see what's on the other side. There's all these people looking up, got their phones. It's like they're at a rock concert or something. But I thought, yeah, I like that. That's good. <laughs> so then we get into walking around Duxford. And just what I wanted to do was capture as many people wearing costumes or uniforms. So we've got, uh, it looks like an auxiliary nurse. It looks like a midwife to me. And I thought, you look like Barbara Flynn from the Beidebeck trilogy and a peculiar practice and open all hours and all the things that Barbara Flynn has been in. Um, and I, I th thought she looked spectacular. It's like nothing is incorrect here. So I nabbed a shot. Then I'm walking around and I'm capturing... All the little side stalls, I say stalls, they're all tents, and the, the guys are just sat there, and they'll probably be sat there all day long doing nothing, because they don't do any events. They don't jump in a jeep and drive up and down. They just sit there, making it look authentic, as if Duxford is in the middle of war. And the USAAF, is it? Um, the Army Air Force, I think they were stationed at Duxford with their... Um, P-47 Thunderbolts. So yeah, I've got kind of a GI. Almost authentic, apart from the fact that you can see his mobile phone in his pocket. <laughs> I thought, let's make it black and white. Because then it really will look authentic. But maybe I need to have some kind of filter that ages a black and white image. You know, kind of puts grain in and kind of the folds and the creases, that kind of thing. Then we've got an RAF personnel guy who to me looks like Jim Howick from Horrible Histories and Ghosts. I wanted, I wanted to go up and say, Hi, I'm a shouty man. Hi, I'm a shouty man. <laughs> but you don't do that kind of thing, do you? <laughs> and then the guy, you know, with his arm to his forehead, looks like a GI. You know, the mechanic guys that are always trundling. I thought, yeah, great shot. Let's turn it black and white. Let's see if we can um, make it look more authentic. 1940s. RAF pilot soaking up the rays. It really does look authentic when you're walking around Duxford. It's such a pleasant thing to experience. So, yeah, they're waiting for the word scramble. Got the gramophone on making it black and white, I think that actually pops more than the colour one. This image, I was having a chat with the guy, um, you'll see it if you watch the video, he was he was at the observer area with his binoculars watching a, a Messerschmitt 108 flying around, <laughs> and I was having a conversation with him, um, but his look, he looks to me like one of the old comedians from the 1970s, think Terry and June, think Kenneth Cope, who played um, Randall and Hopkirk and, you know, many carry-on films. He's just got that quintessential working-class English look about him. And lo and behold, he's in a military uniform. <laughs> I'm just drawn to his face all the time. I know there's a girl there, there's all the stuff in the background, but it's his face. It's like, he, he's probably got a very dry sense of humour, but has a serious life. That's what I'm reading into it. Making him black and white, maybe it pops, maybe it should be better in colour, I don't know. I was walking past this girl, she was doing some crocheting, and I don't know if that's part of cosplay, you know, that you do crocheting, crochet, crocheting, crocheting. She realised I was taking a picture of her because she was having a conversation with someone on her left. Then she looked at me. Then she looked at the guy on the left. Then she put her head down and just kept it there as if to say, OK, if you're going to take a picture of me, get on with it. I won't move. So she obliged. It was fabulous. And I did thank her in the end. <laughs> Turning it black and white. It does, you know, ATA. What does that mean? I haven't looked it up. But it's like an old wren sitting in front of a 1940s Austin waiting for her 
boyfriend to arrive with the aeroplane after the um, war. This, there was, there were aircraft flying. And I think the guy on the right was actually taking a picture of them and had asked them to pose. And I thought, in this environment of Duxford, with the air, air hangar in the background, painted in 1940s colours, brown and green, the tent, the United States Air Force guys, all in their uniform, just a fabulous catch for me. I really enjoyed that. Um, he did have an authentic camera, actually, so probably a film camera, making it black and white. They're waiting for their B-17 or the chance to go up in the air and drop some bombs. Those guys did a lot, didn't they? OK, one more picture, because we don't want the videos to go on forever, do we? I was out, as I said, Monday, doing my Blue Moon photography. Blue Moon? Blue Hour and Full Moon photography. And I caught a picture of the moon isolated in a black sky. And, you know, I'm not very good at moon photography because I don't know the setting, so I've got to practice that. But people have come back to me and said, look, if you're doing 200 mil, then get 200 um, of a second and then regulate your aperture accordingly. You know, so fast speed and, you know, whatever you zoom. If you're zooming in at 140 mil, then get 140 second, you know, 1142. So I took this picture of the moon, isolated, and I took this picture of the harbour arm with the actual size moon as it was. I thought, I wonder if I can do one of those composite images where you take the moon and you superimpose it onto your other image and then you stretch it out and zoom it out. <laughs> we call it artistic license. <laughs> Look at the size of that moon. It's like a moon from Endor. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just the moon wasn't that big. In fact, the moon was a little at, at probably one o'clock. If you if you used the um, lighthouse looking straight up at 12, the moon was up there. Well, you saw it in the other picture. But, yeah, a little bit of jiggery-pokery. And we can do anything in photo editing software. So there you go. That's my first um, midweek roll video. It may well be as long as 30, second, uh, 30 minutes, but that doesn't matter, does it? It's all about just showing you what I do with my camera when I'm out and about and I'm not vlogging. Hopefully I'll do a few more of these. Maybe not every week, maybe midweek per month camera roll. It depends if I get out and do photography, right? Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess I'll see you in an, another video, probably out and about. Bye for now.